NTT Data Podcast. Hi, this is Daria from NTT Data, and welcome to Innovation Insights a series of podcasts in which NTT Data picks out emerging technologies and concepts that are developed today and which we will think that will have a transformational impact on the world economy in the next few years. Today, we're going to hear about quantum computing, which exploits the unique and often strange characteristics of quantum mechanics to offer us new ways to carry out calculations of extraordinary complexity. As we depend more and more on business applications that require processing of data in vast quantities, the speed and capacity of quantum computing will become essential. But how soon will it be here? And what difference will it make? Let's find out. Quantum mechanics has been an irresistible subject for speculation and research for well over a century, ever since Max Planck published a key paper on the subject in 1900. Einstein disapproved, and it's not hard to see why. Quantum mechanics states that bodies at a subatomic, or quantum level, operate to different rules compared with those at macro level. This has had a big impact on the popular imagination. It features heavily in science fiction for a start, and not many people could tell you anything about Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger but everyone knows about Schrödinger's cat, his famous thought experiment. This is where he used the idea of his pet, sealed in a box with a toxic substance, with no one knowing if he was alive or dead, to illustrate a paradox of quantum mechanics. The bodies may potentially occupy two states at once, and only observation determines the final state. So why does this matter? And especially, why does this matter to us? in the technology industry? The answer, at least in headline terms, is that all modern computers operate according to classical mechanics, which states that the loss of information gives off heat. That's known as Landauer's law. This explains why cooling systems become more essential as the amount of data processed increases. It also means that power usage rises until an, as yet, theoretical point where it is impossible to input the level of power required to process a certain level of calculations. And this is starting to become problematic. The reason for this is the exponential, apparently unending growth in the amount of data we use and produce. According to the tech consulting firm IDC, the amount of data in existence in 2020 was 64 zettabytes. By 2025, this is expected to reach 163 zettabytes. One zettabyte, by the way, is equal to a trillion gigabytes. This means the data in existence doubles every 18 months. Everything we do increases the need for data, real-time data to replace actuarial calculations or insurance, to manage traffic flows, digitize unstructured information, replace words with images, develop and implement immersive technologies, and so on. We currently use classical computing to examine huge amounts of data for patterns, as well as to carry out conventional calculations. We'll reach a point when our ability to process data has a natural limit, according to classical mechanics. Then what do we do? The answer is quantum computing for two simple reasons. The first relates to energy use. Quantum mechanics does not use energy in the same way as classical mechanics. That inflexible rule that each piece of work requires energy input and heat output does not fully apply in the quantum state. Quantum computers will execute tasks of enormous scale while using very little energy. The second reason takes us right back to the paradox highlighted by Schrödinger, the fact that quantum particles can potentially be in different states at the same time. This is due to a phenomenon known as superposition, which means the basic unit of quantum computing, known as the qubit, can hold both zero and one states simultaneously. 
This means that instead of carrying out many different computations, making positive or negative judgments one after the other, a quantum computer can make these different calculations at the same time. As the complexity of calculations required grows, the business advantage delivered by quantum computing also grows. Eventually, we will reach the point where only this approach can deliver the outcomes we require. This is sometimes known as quantum transcendence, the point at which quantum computers will solve problems that cannot be managed in a reasonable time by classical computers. We're not at this point yet, but we need to be ready for it. That's why NTT Data, which commits a budget of close to 3 billion US dollars each year into original research, is focusing strongly on this subject and for the long term. None of the technology options now in development are fully reliable as yet. There are often many errors that require correction, for example, but quantum devices are already in commercial use for specialized tasks. These include testing pharmaceutical molecules for efficacy, calculating yield curves in financial services, managing traffic flows, and optimizing logistics. We believe that committing to any single version of quantum technology is not wise at this stage because all the options have issues and remain experimental. That's why, in addition to our own original research, we're working closely with AWS to bring a service-led approach to market. The service is called Bracket, a carefully chosen term for those in the know, as a cat is an individual quantum state, and a bracket is the name for a written equation describing that state. The service is rooted in research and includes inputs from a range of different hardware. So we mitigate risk by keeping options open in this development period while allowing you to test quantum services through conventional service contracts. Quantum computing is going to be a big part of our lives from the next decade on. Now is the time to get engaged, but with care setting realistic expectations, making sure you're well-tuned into new developments, but doing it all in a way that keeps your risks low and delivers the benefits early. If you want to learn more, we have produced a white paper on quantum computing, which gives a useful introduction to this very complex subject. You can download it from our website. Please join us next time for more technology insights.